students, maupay nga adlaw. I am Miss Renalina Nyano, your science teacher. We will be learning new and amazing science concepts for this week. But first things first, let us recall our previous topic for you to be ready for this week's new learning. Are you ready? Great! Let's start! Do you still remember the different life processes? Let's see them. Identify the life process being described on each statement. Choose your answer from the word bank. Again, identify the statement being described and choose your answer from the word bank. Do you understand? Great! These are your choices in answering the activity. Absorption, assimilation, digestion, ingestion, ingestion. Number 1. It is the act of putting food in the mouth. What is your answer? Correct! Ingestion. Number 2. It is the breakdown of food molecules into simple and soluble form. What is your answer? Very good! It is digestion. Number 3. It is the process where digested food is absorbed by the villi of small intestine. What do you think? Great! It is absorption. Number 4. It happens when simple products are used to build up bigger molecules of proteins and carbohydrates. How about this one? What is your answer? Very good! It is assimilation. Number five, it is the process where undigested food is moved out of the body. Lastly, this is ingestion. Very good! A big round of applause for a job well done. We are done with the warm-up. Thus, let us proceed to our new topic. We'll be discussing the organs of the digestive system. And at the end of the lesson, you are expected to 1. Identify the organs that make up the digestive system. 2. Describe the process of digestion in the human digestive system. And 3. Determine the importance of mechanical digestion. Damo ba? Do not worry. This topic is easy PC. Just listen carefully and be attentive. Kaya ba? Great! Let's start! We all know that oxygen is important for us humans to live. But our cells need more than just oxygen. We need nutrients to sustain our bodily functions, which means we need to eat food. And that food needs to get broken down into tiny components that cells can use for energy production. So, how does this work? Let's look at the digestive system now. The digestive system is divided into two main parts. The alimentary canal, or also called as the gastrointestinal tract, which is essentially one long continuous tube that starts at your mouth, where food goes in and winds all the way down the body to end at the anus. The rest of the digestive system is made up of accessory digestive organs, which are not part of the alimentary tract, but still plays an important role in digestion. All of these components work together to produce the sequence of the five life processes, the ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation, and ingestion. Therefore, the task of the digestive system in the body is transforming the raw materials of the food into the nutrients and energy that keep us alive. What are the organs that comprise the alimentary tract? These are mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus. Let's take a look at each organ's structure and function. Mouth When the food enters the mouth, food is mechanically and chemically digested. Food that enters the mouth is lubricated and chewed until it forms into a ball-shaped mass called bolus. 
the pharynx. The pharynx or throat is located at the back of the mouth. It is about 5 to 6 inches long. The pharynx is the common passageway for digestion and respiration. The esophagus. The esophagus is a muscular tube through which food passes from the pharynx to the stomach. The stomach. The stomach is the expanded organ located between the esophagus and small intestine. It is a muscular elastic pear-shaped organ that performs three functions. Stores the swallowed food, mixes the food with the digestive juice it produces, and conveys its contents slowly into the small intestine. The small intestine. The small intestine is considered as the organ of complete digestion and nutrient absorption. Structurally, the small intestine is the longest organ of the digestive system. The large intestine. The large intestine or colon is the next organ after the small intestine. The rectum and anus. The rectum is located at the distal end of the colon. It is about 8 inches and basically serves as a warehouse for the undigested residue or feces. At the end part of the rectum is the anal canal or anus that functions as the exit point for fecal materials. The accessory organs of digestion are the exocrine glands. They have ducts and openings that secrete chemical substances into the organs of digestion that facilitate the digestive process. The salivary glands. The salivary glands are located in the mouth. The salivary glands secrete saliva, a chemical substance that is a combination of watery fluid and mucus. The liver and gallbladder. The liver is the largest organ in the body. The liver performs many vital functions in the body, and one of which is the production of bile. Bile performs two important functions in digestion. It emulsifies fats and neutralizes acidity of the partly digested food that comes from the stomach. Bile is temporarily stored and concentrated in the gallbladder. The pancreas. The pancreas is a large, elongated gland that produces pancreatic juices which shall break down carbohydrates, proteins, and fats in the small intestine. All in all, these are the organs that comprise the digestive system. Did you know that the digestive process begins even before food hits your tongue? For example, if we see, or smell, or even think of a tasty ginataan, salivary glands in the mouth start to pump out saliva. We produce about 1.5 liters of saliva each day. Once inside the mouth, chewing combined with the splashing saliva will turn food into a moist lump called the bolus. Then, your food finds itself at the rim of a long tube called the esophagus, down which it must travel the esophagus to reach the stomach. Nerves in the surrounding tissues in the esophagus sense that there is a bolus and will trigger peristalsis, which is a series of defined muscular wave-like contractions that propels the food into the stomach. Investigation of the interior of the stomach reveals the presence of folds called rugae. Within the rugae are gastric glands that secrete gastric juices that dissolve the food and break down its proteins. The hormones that secrete gastric juices alert the accessory organs and will produce gastric juices and transfer bile, a yellowish-green liquid that digests fat. After three hours inside the stomach, the contraction or churning of the stomach mixes the food with the gastric juice until the food is changed into chyme, which is the semi-fluid, partly digested food and is ready to move into the small intestine. The liver sends bile to the gallbladder, which secretes it into the first portion of the small intestine called the duodenum. Here, it dissolves the fats present in the chyme so they can easily be digested by the pancreatic and intestinal juices. These juices are rich in enzymes that break the fat molecules into fatty acids, protein into amino acids, and carbohydrates into glucose, for easier absorption into the body. 
This complex process is happening in the small intestine's lower regions, the jejunum and ileum. The nutrients absorbed from the chyme are transported to the bloodstream with the help of the million tiny projections called the villi that will feed the organs and tissues. These events make the small intestine as the most important organ in the digestive system. Then, leftover fiber, water, and dead cells make it into the large intestine, also known as the colon. The body drains out most of the remaining fluid through the intestinal wall. What's left now is a soft mass called stool. The large intestine squeezes this byproduct into a pouch called the rectum, where nerves sense it's expanding and tell the body when it's time to expel the waste. The byproducts of digestion, or the waste, exit through the anus, and the food's long journey, typically lasting between 30 and 40 hours, is finally complete. Why do we have to chew our food properly? Let us try to answer this question by doing this simple activity. Our objective is to know which candy will mix with water faster. These are the materials that we are going to use. Beakers or any container, steering rods, hot water, please do ask assistance, and candies. One that is crushed and one that is not. Procedure. Put the same amount of hot water to both containers. Please do this carefully or with the assistance of your parents or older siblings. Put the candies in the containers. Then, steer the water using the steering rods. Please do this carefully and slowly. Note that I only increased the speed in this part. Let us look at the result. We can see that the crushed candy mixed with water faster compared with that of the whole candy. So, how is it related with our topic then? Why do we have to chew our food properly? Or in other words, what is the importance of mechanical digestion? Correct! It is for easier digestion and absorption of nutrients. If we will relate it to our activity, the crushed candy mixed with water faster because it is broken down into smaller parts. Same as if we chew our food well, digestion and absorption of nutrients will be easier. Therefore, always remember to chew your food well and observe good eating habits to prevent indigestion and other serious health problems related with digestive system. You were able to learn the different organs of the digestive system and its corresponding function. Now, take a look at the activities that you will answer. Can you answer them well? Great! If you have questions to ask or parts to clarify, you can reach me through the contact details reflected in your activity sheet. You can do it. Again, this is Ms. Renalina Nyano saying, One cannot think well, love well, sleep well, if he has not dined well. Goodbye!